we are asked to divide uh, negative 4x to the fifth minus 3 by x cubed. Personally, I think a long division style is a little bit easier. Uh, it kind of makes more sense with the flow, so that's what I'll be using. So I set it up as a long division problem. x cubed is going into negative 4x to the fifth minus 3. Now, <clears throat> when I set these up, it's really important to have placeholders on these, placeholders on each part to kind of help us with that. So this is the one that really needs the placeholder so that we can divide into each part and see what happens. So I'll just rewrite it with the placeholders. Negative four x to the fifth, it's missing x to the fourth, so I'll give it an x to the fourth. Zero x to the fourth plus zero x cubed plus zero x squared plus 0x uh, minus that 3 at the end. So what that allows us to do is we just uh, can fill in each spot when we do it with the long division style. So here's how I do it. I would say uh, x cubed times what equals negative 4x to the fifth. You can also divide negative 4 x to the fifth by this one and it'll give you the same answer but just mentally in my head it just makes more sense that way so that's what I kind of encourage students to kind of see it as so I would say what times 1 is negative 4 well negative 4 times 1 is negative 4 what times x cubed is x to the fifth x squared times x cubed is x to the fifth. And then I just confirm negative four x squared times x cubed is negative four x to the fifth. So I'll go ahead and multiply it. That's neg negative four x squared times x cubed is negative four x to the fifth. And then there's no other parts to multiply, so we're okay there. Then we, <clears throat> now my trick is you're supposed to subtract this one right here I always like thinking of it as an add problem, and then I switch the signs. And to me, it just mentally, it, it makes more sense. So for me, the shorthand is since this negative is changing to a positive, I write that positive and I circle it. What that does is it just allows me to see it so that if I've made a mistake when I write it, I'm not writing over my math that I've already done. So everything's still preserved here. So this is negative four x to the fifth, added to 4x to the fifth, and if you do it right, this has to cancel out. So this zeroes out, and then I'm on to the next uh, term, and this is a zero, so uh, x cubed times what is zero, x to the fourth, well, uh, times zero. Zero, it zeroes it out, so that all makes sense. And what's happening here is we just have our placeholders that are just, we're kind of going through Nothing's really happening here for each one. Uh, what times x cubed is zero, x squared zero. Uh, what times x cubed is zero. So usually we kind of stop at the, when the powers get smaller than this one right here. So I, I could have stopped here. I just like following through with it because it, it just makes more sense until I hit that last term. So that's a zero on the x. And then x cubed times what is negative three? Well, this is the one where we kind of look at it as a fraction. That's what I always kind of remember. It's negative three x cubed. And it should make sense. If I multiply negative three x cubed times this, the x cubes cancel and I'm just left with negative three. So, our final answer here, if I'm dividing it, turns into negative 4x squared minus 3 over x cubed. Now, on uh, this particular program, they're asking for the remainder itself. So like in a remainder form, in the remainder form, Uh, this is the best answer, though. This is actually how we would write the answer. But if you want to look at the remainder, we have the uh, 4x squared. That's the, the whole parts. And then the fractional part, the remainder, remainder. 
So I'll put R is a negative three. So this would be what we'd submit for the program, but like I said, uh, we'd always, it's better to kind of write it as a complete statement. So this would be the, the exact answer. All right, so now let's go ahead and break it up or add a little bit more to it, and let's give it a shot. It's gonna be very much the same style. <clears throat> so this one is going into that one. So uh, x cubed plus x plus one is going into five x cubed plus two x squared plus x plus two. So I'll set it up in my long division style. All that's going into 5x cubed plus 2x squared plus x plus 2. All right, now I, I see that, you know, just make sure that you don't have anything missing. And notice we do have something missing here. I have a missing x squared on this one. So I really like having those placeholders. It just makes the math a little simpler as we go through so it doesn't bend the, the mind as much. So I'll, I'll go ahead and add my placeholder to this one. So this is x cubed plus zero x squared plus x plus one. We need to go in descending order and it's going into five x cubed plus two x squared plus x plus two. And we'll see why we need this placeholder when we actually go into it because it fits and links together a lot easier that way. All right, so same game is we look at the leading, co the leading term, the leading terms, and I would say x cubed times what is 5x cubed? x cubed times what is 5x cubed? x cubed times 5. 5 times x cubed is 5x cubed. So <clears throat> then we just go ahead and we multiply everything through this whole uh, polynomial by that 5. And that's why we had to have that placeholder so that it links together with what's left. So you don't have anything that doesn't link together when you're using placeholders. So uh, five times x cubed is five x cubed. Five times zero x squared is zero x squared. And notice it links together, that's why we did that. Five times x is five x, and five times one is five. Then I'll go ahead and use my little trick. I like to add straight down. <clears throat> so, and then you change all the signs. So that's the same thing as subtracting down, is I'm adding straight down, but I change all the signs. So this now becomes a negative. That one's a negative. This is a negative, and that one's a negative. I don't really need negative on the zero, but you know, that's, it's just good to have that proper uh, procedure. So this has to drop out. So if you do, you've done something wrong, if this one doesn't drop out, and that one drops out. I don't want to have my zero there. It kind of throws me off having that extra zero. So I'm not going to worry about it. That's gone. Check. And then this one right here, 2x squared minus 0x squared. Doesn't even play a part in it. We still have our 2x squared. And x minus 5x is negative 4x. And 2 minus 5 is negative 3. Okay, and now if you notice that what we have here, if this was an, uh, a power greater than three, then I would continue the process and fill in the answers there. But we have an x squared here, which is less than that power. So that means this is kind of the remainder. This is the extra stuff. So if I were to write the final answer, we have five over here, and then plus this remainder, 2x squared minus 4x minus 3, and we always kind of have that fraction right there. And then we don't need this placeholder anymore because we've kind of done with our math. And we have the x cubed plus x plus 1. So this would be kind of the complete answer here. But in this program, they're looking at the remainder aspect of it. So the remainder would just be this part right here along with the 5. So I would say 5. Uh, and then remainder of, and then the remainder is that 2x squared minus 4x minus 3. So remember, this is kind of the best answer, and I really like showing you what, like the complete answer, not stopping. Uh, but for the program, they're asking for the remainder, so it would be 5 remainder.